boisterous thing. Oh, that's the part. Ten bucks to go. He's on a deep lesson. Ten bucks to go, he's not. Mixed with any alcohol. Yeah, you got a person. Correct the bottle of the bottle. Pound of glass in the middle. Turn it under alcohol. Go green, Persian. Skin more than white wine. Less silvery, Douglas. Bob Cook, Douglas. Or a lot of Lincoln. Thank you, Gary, for coming up to the turn out. Next is David Adam, the David Adam in the poll. Seeing none, I'll take that. Any public comment on today's agenda? Seeing none, I'll bring it back for a motion. Do you approve the agenda as presented? Yes, sir. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, seeing the public saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passed unanimous. Member announcements and correspondence. Uh, do any members have anything you want to bring up? Commissioner Ray. I uh, acknowledge that, um, like most of the commission, have received a lot of correspondence on the quotas. I'd like to ask that the county advisory boards look over the recommendation summary that the department's put together and make sure that that is accurate for your advisory boards. And if it's not, I'll let everybody know at the appropriate time when it's kept comments or later on. Um, we did receive emails on the bear quota. I don't know if you know from, but somewhere in, well, in excess of a dozen of those. It was specific to that. Also, there be quite a few uh, emails on the elk. Seems to be some issues with that. We're going to be some correspondence on. And I've actually gotten a couple of uh, phone calls and several of them in reference <coughs> to deer photos. I don't know if they've gotten any, any of those. But um, I really haven't, I really haven't seen other than cab comments. Is, is there anything on that or, um, things that are being publicized about the uh, department and actions of the department. It's kind of interesting, there is a um, ser series of articles that come out every month uh, by former commissioner, Mr. Vogler, called Fumes from the Farm. It's rather interesting. I uh, hope you guys get a chance to read that sometime. You should have to put you on this distribution list if you want to get it in the well, it's put out, it's put out in the monthly magazine that goes across the state. And, you know, quite often, Department of Wildlife is mentioned in there, and therefore, due to that, and then sometimes the commission kind of might be worth a while just to kind of see what's, what's going on. And it's actually quite, quite interesting. It kind of takes a little while to understand the uh, program. And I'll just read just a little bit about what's coming out in June. Nothing really... Uh, Overwhelming. It's interesting. Lots of talk about sage grouse from people that have a wonderful experience with them. I'll just get gloss over the first portion. It's fairly lengthy. Is that, you know, the telephone poles and sage grouse and the craziness that is involved with trying to remove telephone poles in public Turns land. Off. And a lot of that has direct Turns influence off. by the biologists, the Department of Wildlife. And, you know, yeah. You know, whether one agrees or disagrees with the philosophy of the matter, there's some very uh, pertinent points to the practicalities of the policy department. And due to some of the stuff we're talking about yesterday, and we'll be talking extensively about it at the next meeting, the predation angle, it's kind of interesting, uh, especially interesting language. Please get out, let's see, now that you know how well your tax dollars are being spent on sage grouse, please get out your aluminum foil helmet on before entering the great outdoors. It's the same logic as the Nevada protectors of wildlife used when it comes to predator control. Studies indicate that mountain lions kill a deer-sized animal a week and out claims to 3,000 mountain lions a state. Does it take genius to figure out the numbers? Uh, means that lion alone, not counting other predators, in excess of three times the number of deer that are deer tags issued annually by the department, according to scientific numbers. Um, Endow's answer is to remove livestock, stop predation, predator control, and take away other uses of our state's lands for habitat improvement. I guess the, the math, the lions take more than three times the number of deer than 
and end out issues tags for hunting doesn't concern them. Math should not rule out factless science and no common sense. And last line. You know, it's well one agrees or not, we should, uh, definitely want to take a look and see what's what's out there and put some of the information, some good information coming out. And I thank the people who sent us all the emails. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I just want to let everybody know real quick, I'm going to uh, step out for a couple hours this morning. Um, we have a kid that's uh, trying to get to, you know, be real honest with you, the state finals for some track stuff. So I'm going to go watch him. It's his last year. Uh, how do you want to handle uh, uh, the black bear stuff? I just didn't want anybody to think I'm shirking my responsibilities there. But uh, um, I respect whatever you decide to do. And just let everybody know I haven't. I haven't necessarily changed my, my mindset from last year. I'm kind of in the same position, with the same, same thought process. It's just to look at the What time in the show we do? However, this is important. Um, I'm going to be here in a few minutes. Uh, you know how those things go. It's totally out of my control. So um, I imagine I won't be much later than two or three hours. Don't, don't, hold it up, don't hold it up for me. I, like I said, I've got some of the same concerns that I had last year. Um, and I'll put it on the record that, you know, unless I, I were to hear a, a something major in the discussion, I'm, I'd probably lean towards not the same quarter like I did last year. That's, that's kind of where I'm at on it. We'll, we'll see how this plays out. And we know how these days go. Sometimes they take forever and sometimes they go pretty quick. So uh, we'll see what we can do to accommodate this area. I missed one piece of correspondence and it was related to a subject that was brought up before at, I believe I mentioned it back at the first meeting of this year, and that was something also from uh, going on with Mr. Bowman. I asked the department at one point if there's a lawsuit out there, and my understanding is that it's going before the state Supreme Court, and it, I believe, is called the United State Department of Agriculture against Ken Corker or vice versa. And, and it indirectly involves the Department of Wildlife in that it alleges that Mr. Bowman was taken off this commission illegally and without any notice whatsoever during a time of which, at which he was suffering a uh, life-threatening illness, namely a cancer that he had come upon him. And he was removed from this commission, he never resigned, and it was done, allegedly done illegally, and we've never heard anything of that in our, legis in our um, legal updates, the litigation report, but that should be coming up. My understanding is it's on the docket for the state Supreme Court here within the next couple months. And it might have direct implications on this board. It might have, you know, it's hard to say, it's a lot of implications. Maybe we have a legal number, maybe now the action to take the last couple of years of legal. I don't know. We have a lot of implications. And it really would have been nice if we did some simple elements for all that from our legal staff. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have a commission or group? Yeah, just one housekeeping item. I mean, if you do want to speak today, just fill out a yellow card. Even if you got one yesterday, it's for our reporting secretary to keep them separate by the day. I won't call people up by the card. Um, so if you want to testify on something for public comment, just come up and keep track of you. Um, three minutes for individuals, six minutes for committee. Uh, and the other point I'd like to make is I appreciate that the correspondence we've got and Commissioner Rain summarized most of that and we'll discuss that more uh, when we get into the individual speeches as far as the photo stuff goes. Um, but also wanted to say that I appreciate all 17 tabs providing input for this meeting. So thank you guys uh, for holding the meeting and being involved. Anybody else? Commissioner Rain? We'll close that agenda item and move on to agenda item number 14, County Right Awards. Uh, member items are informational. Members may present urgent items. No action may be taken. Any item requiring commission action will be skipped to all future meetings. Any county right will check in. Thank you, John Reed, uh, Washoe Cab. It's uh, my great pleasure to bring to your attention the most recent uh, issue of the Bugle magazine which many people in this room recognize as the official publication of the Rocky Mountain Health Foundation. 
which is a, a great conservation group. Uh, they have, in the normal uh, course of running their uh, magazine, in this case on page 24, Preserved Forever, is category featured uh, in this magazine and given only to recognize the most significant endowments to the Elk Foundation that benefit conservation efforts in Elk Country. Commissioner Macbeth and his family received this honor due to their extremely generous easement bequeathed to the Foundation, 1,480 acres of prime habitat. This extraordinarily personal family contribution obviously speaks highly of the Macbeth family and displays their dedication to conservation and wildlife in Nevada. I would also like to thank indirectly that it also reflects well on this commission, the CAVs, the NGOs, and the others that share the Macbeth's passion and commitment to the wildlife and conservation of Nevada. Yesterday we recognized the monumental and successful efforts of several leaders in conservation in the state. Commissioner Macbeth and his family have certainly raised the bar. Well done, sir. I just want to clarify that uh, the Mitch Pizzetti, Oakland County uh, Advisory Board. I wanted to uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Elko County hadn't had a chance to thank, uh, to congratulate Mr. Uh, Wasley on his uh, promotion. And uh, we're glad to see biologists from our side of the state and, and the director of Vendow. So uh, I apologize, I meant to bring this up yesterday, but uh, I got lost and went to the wrong place tonight. I showed up a little late, but uh, uh, Mr. Carpenter, uh, John Carpenter would probably have me if I didn't. Uh, we revisited the uh, wildlife management uh, predation plan at our last meeting, and uh, we strongly want to make in, in the county make sure that the three dollar fee is spent on predator management and not on uh, habitat. And uh, Elko County uh, took a vote to try and make sure all three dollar fee was spent on. Predator Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Any Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Bob Cook, Douglas County Advisory Board. Uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate Mr. Wasley on his plan. And uh, thank you for the opportunity for letting me go up to speak. I'd like to say that I. Uh, we had a meeting the other night and our county advisory board voted unanimously to send a letter to the entire commission and director Wasley. I'd like to read it into the record briefly. And it starts out, Director Wasley, Tony Wasley, dear Director Tony Wasley, State Board of Wildlife Commission Chairman Jack Roth, we would like to see the Nevada Department of Wildlife Commissioners take action on the use of trail cameras as Technology advances, game divisions need to make changes also. We feel it is our duty as citizen, citizen advisory boards to be a voice for all concerned. The elimination of trail cameras just prior to and during hunting season would preserve and maintain the integrity for all legitimate hunters. This regulation is also necessary to maintain ethical hunting practices. We, the Douglas Cab, would like the Commission to take action to consider one of the Two following suggestions. One, ban trail cameras completely, as the state of Montana has outlawed trail cameras for over 10 years in regular season. Four, adjust the law to be similar with the flying laws already in place in Nevada, which requires all cameras to be off the ground 96 hours before the first big game hunt annually. Also, looking ahead, anticipating what may happen in the future, it may be proven to not disallow the inclusion of drone there. Um, 
conversation. Please consider this formal request to agendize this item in the near future to allow the Commission to all gas to discuss and provide input. Thank you for your consideration. From the County Advisory Board Manager Wildlife. This letter is very brief, does not talk about all of the issues, uh, all of the pros, all of the cons, but if we at least put it on the agenda, it will allow all of the county advisory boards to represent their constituents, uh, conservationists, hunters alike, uh, to weigh in on the fact. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank you. And we did discuss this on yesterday, and after receiving your letter, I did uh, forward it on to Rob on it's a discussion that Mr. Bonamich and I have had in the past, and we're going to work forward to get this on the future agenda. Uh, I don't think it's going to be an easy topic. It's going to take some time, and there's going to be some people wound up on both sides of this. So, uh, that's what we're here for, to take care of problems if they exist, and we're working on them. I agree. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Any other kind of private reports? Uh, Mr. Chairman, can you tell me what the process would be for us to enact that? Is it a law, a rule, something that we can do as a commission to become a strong proponent of these challenges? We could uh, uh, work with Rob, we could develop some type of regulation, and then we could review the regulation as the commission and have the CAS review it and weigh in on it, and then we can vote on the regulation going forward. So it's, that's the process for the staff to develop something. We give them the direct direction of what we want them to develop and we throw it out to the cabs and the general public and then bring it back and put it in. We can enact it or leave it as is. Oh, I'll order that one. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else? Seeing none, we'll close that agenda item and we'll move on to uh, agenda item number 15. Commission Regulation 1309-2013 Begin Quotas. Mike's getting ready just so everybody knows. Uh, we'll probably start with sheep and goats. Uh, kind of get our feet wet on those and so everybody knows how the process is going to go. And, uh, there are a couple of my favorite items too, so I'll get ready to start on that. Mike Cox, the big game staff biologist for the Nevada Department of Wildlife. Uh, I normally have a, uh, another person sitting next to me, and I guess I've lost him to, to our leadership. But uh, hopefully, it will help me out throughout the day in a different uh, location. 
So we'll start with uh, Fremont sheep quotas and uh, mountain goats. Wanted to uh, just kind of go over uh, a little bit of data from last year, how we set quotas, just to remind everyone uh, the criteria that we use. So we have our statewide plan that was uh, developed back in 01. And uh, through our survey data and our modeling of each herd, we, we estimate the number of rams and ewes in each herd. And our criteria for generating recommendations for those ram tags are 8% of the total estimated rams not to exceed 50% of the mature rams. And in our case, we consider six years of age as a mature ram. Uh, this is uh, a graph of the harvest since 93. The bars are the number of tags that have been issued. And uh, the yellow circles are the average age, the trend of the average age of the harvest rams. And I know we, we came forward with a very sizable increase last year. Uh, we really felt that we had the mature rams out there. We were being uh, somewhat conservative. Um, and sure enough, we, they were there. Uh, there was almost no change in the average age. Uh, we also, in our statewide plan, state that we're going to maintain uh, six years of age uh, for an average age statewide. So we've been maintaining that um, around 6.4. And in fact, last year was about 6.5. This is the average age. Hunter success hardly went down. So even though we increased by um, about 25% uh, average age, average score went up. So we really feel uh, strong that we're, we're tracking our big owner herds well and uh, providing that opportunity that uh, sportsmen can, can uh, appreciate uh, and have a, a great hunt out there. It's, it's, uh, as Commissioner Rob said, he's, he's very passionate about his critter and, and the opportunities to be out in the field to pursue it. It's, it's a cool way. Any questions on, on that criteria or how things went last year? I was on the Big Sheep Plan when we developed the criteria. And uh, so I've known the criteria for quite a while. Uh, you and I have been on some walks in some particular areas that when you know that criteria, you know what you're looking at through the spotting scopes and the numbers you're seeing. I still believe we're conservative. We are criteria is conservative, but our biologists are still extremely I started to see them, I had uh, seen nine book brands. Um, and uh, I know I didn't see every brand in that unit, but there's no way it's huge. Um, but I am just amazed with uh, at the, uh, at the uh, you know, big horn herd out in the Middle and I'm sure that the other areas are very uh, similar. But, uh, I can tell you that uh, this is a quick sheet for Say conservative is probably an understatement. So, uh, I, I do want to thank the uh, department from the biologist uh, and Pat Cummins and Mike Cox and all the rest of you guys, Mike Scott. Uh, I got I was very fortunate uh, that after I killed my ram went over the morning uh, that I got that up with Pat Cummins and uh, and uh, along with Pat were uh, Mike Scott and Tom Dunn and, uh, and so I spent some uh, evenings around the campfire with these guys. And, Tell you that they're all very passionate about the 
Thank you, uh, Commissioner McBeth. It brings up a point that maybe I can just take a few minutes. There's a lot of things we do to, to allow for these hunts to happen, these herds to uh, be restored. We've been pretty busy the last couple of years. Um, so it's not just setting tags. Um, we've been making a lot of herds. Two years ago, we had a record uh, transplant year where we transplanted almost 300 big orange sheep of all subspecies throughout Nevada. <coughs> and uh, this last year, we, we didn't do as many, um, but we, uh, with, with all the sheep that we have, uh, we were very gracious and we were able to give the state of Utah 50 desert greenhorn, uh, something that we were pretty excited about to help other states restore their herds. Uh, they're coming back uh, for more. And then we can lose uh, 25 desert greenhorn sheep uh, as an augmentation in Esmeralda County and almost 80. California bear horn sheep uh, in Humboldt County and Washoe County, and uh, one that took a long time to organize, but uh, we finally made it happen was restoring Rocky Mountain bear horn sheep in East Humboldt Range, uh, which came from Alberta, uh, monitoring those, and uh, doing really well. Uh, we'll land here shortly. So that program uh, is something that, that is, as Mr. McBeth, I'm sure you've heard that on the campfire, those, those efforts, uh, we're pretty passionate about putting sheep back to where they were. There's a lot of challenges out there, but right now it's, it's uh, pretty much we, we uh, now are estimating our big orange sheep herds statewide all subspecies to be over 11,000. So I think the next highest state to have about 70, 70, 70 orange sheep. It's a big one. It doesn't include last year and They don't even know how many they have. Two, three hundred thousand. All right, so on, on the screen, we'll start with uh, desert big orange sheep on 3151. We didn't get a lot of uh, alternative recommendations, just uh, Knight County and, and Persian County. So, uh, they don't want to speak, then. Uh, we are looking at uh, pretty similar tag numbers as last year. Just a 1% uh, increase. Same number of uh, non-residents still give us about approximately 10% split to non-residents. Any questions? <coughs> Any questions from the commission? The only comment I have is uh, we did recognize the problem in Area 252 and uh, put the situation in there on party sides. We've seen things happen on the river line. Small mountain bounded by the test site. Uh, I'm struggling with the number of eight in that area. I'll make no bones about it. That's my first choice. And if I take a couple of tags off that, I can take my own tag away. Uh, but I'd be inclined to take that eight to six. And that's just my own thought process. And I'm going to make the most of this show that out there. Commissioner Rob, you did indicate that uh, I'd probably have to accept what you call as which were conservative. Probably are conservative. Uh, that eight tag was probably conservative. And uh, it is something that we forget 
and I'm glad you, you reminded us that. Not everything needs to be done in forty. There needs to be a lot of work and thought into the season setting, which we did. And I'm very proud to have worked out uh, some of those changes in the seasons with the military, with the Department of Defense, to try to <coughs> minimize the congestion on that relative small area. So I, I, I think with those changes that we that we've added, um, and knowing that we didn't have any major problems last year, always some complaints with too many people, but with with the uh, limitation on the party size, <coughs> we think eight uh, we feel should work. Also want to let you know that we are have been uh, have approached uh, the uh, Nevada test and training range, asking for the extension interior to the training range to occur sooner. Um, but uh, they haven't uh, made a decision yet. It certainly would, would allow for more area for them to spread out. And, uh, and, as you know, we don't, that's not something that we just put in there like the building the town plot. Any other comments? Yeah, just a question, Mike. Um, and maybe Kirsten will get up and address 045153 and their recommendation. But in terms of the recommendation by Nye County on the pancake range um, and reducing uh, that to a proposing reduction anyway due to the die off, is that something I, mean, I understand the issue with? Certainly, uh, Knight County is looking to go from eight to five. Um, and I've said this before in terms of the age structure of various ungulates. Uh, you know, deer is unique where we kill uh, a fair number of yearling bucks, but um, for most other species, we don't, we don't tap into that, that first year age class. Um, we did have a good survey other than uh, the land recruitment uh, has, has severely dropped off and um, that's, that's definitely due to pathogens that that, that herd is harming. We don't know if that's going to be long term, short, short term, is it ever going to turn around. So uh, the future is not right. But currently, uh, when we classified 68 rams uh, last fall, over 50, over 40 were uh, four-year-olds or older, and you know, our philosophy has been: if those mature rams are available, let's take advantage of them because uh, we, we've never been bashful. Once we once we get to that point, knowing that five years ago, six years ago, those cohorts are weak uh, because there wasn't a lot of land recruitment. And therefore, we do not have the uh, village rams filling in. So we feel that we can support eight tags with the current uh, mature ram segment, but uh, you're going to see the productions uh, every year until we see the end. Uh, Kevin Schultz, Nye County. <clears throat> oh, we just. We discussed it. We discussed it with Tom Darm. The Rams are definitely there to hunt right now. I hunt out there. I've seen the Rams that are out there. They had good surveys, and we just thought it was prudent. We discussed it. We discussed it with the biologists. We just thought it was prudent to knock those back a little bit, just because we know that big bull's coming in those that age class of those Rams. We have no lambs for two years, you know, and if it continues, we just we're just saving a few Rams. That's all. Any other commission questions? Commissioner um, Lyman. Mr. Chairman, I guess I would defer to um, Commissioner Young and Commissioner McBeth and also to 
uh, Mr. Dixon, because we did have a big discussion at the CAB on 252 and some of the issues um, that were <coughs> generated by the military there. And so, I mean, I I guess my concern is I don't think we want to wear out our welcome. That's, you know, so I, you know, maybe a smaller number, as you indicate, might be better there to, as opposed to a larger number. That's, but I'm, I'm going to defer to them. Any other commission? Seeing none. Oh, Commissioner McGregor. I guess I'll follow that up with a question from Mike. Uh, did we get a report, a specific report from the, uh, from the Air Force or the Air Force or the Air Force as to how that came from the Air Force? Did we get to put those restrictions on? And so did it, uh, were they happy with the, the results of the hunt? Um, I can't say for certain uh, that there was not any words said from uh, a military of someone who may have gotten close to the boundary or may have driven too far. I know we had, and this was brought up during the season setting, there was a trail cam that was set up. Yes, it, it, it is an issue. Uh, it was set inside the TTR prior to that area being open. The uh, military was aware of it. They, they did not um, take action on it. But I think the season itself went well, and they were very pleased with the changes that we made to limit the party size. And also not to have people hanging out after they harvested their rams and, and to, to go back home and, and to minimize uh, the people out there. So I, I know Tom Don, um, he has done a great job to build that strong relationship we have with their military and non-military folks. And the big thing that they always tell us is we are excited to be able to offer this hunt to the public. And we don't want to have a black eye. We don't want to be the ones telling people no. They ask, you know, they want us or you guys to be the bad guys. Um, so they're very excited. And they've never wanted to reduce uh, you know, the party size themselves or uh, the number of tags, they, they want to leave that up to us. But I, I do believe eight, with the past regulations, is, is maybe a threshold. But we had eight last year, um, and we didn't have any major problems, and I really think it would change, it would be okay. And everybody knows with this hunt and a few other hunts, that, are adjacent to the TTR and TTR, there is ram movement. Absolutely. And depending on whether it's wet or dry, some of those rams stay interior. Uh, but uh, there we go. The only comment I have, uh, you say that the staff is excited they can offer that opportunity. We're all aware that commanders change on test ranges military installations and uh, I don't want to do one bad what's that? It just takes one bad situation. And, and you know uh, it wouldn't even have to be in my mind a bad situation under the new commander coming in. He could review past bad practices and shut us down before we even get there. So I want to do the best we can to be good stewards in that area. And uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a very special place to me, and, and I, I, my biggest concern is losing it in the future, so I want to do everything we can to do the right thing to do it. Okay, any other commission comments? If not, I'll take that to public comment.
joke frame Persian cab. Our recommendation was that the department's recommendation this year for that 045 to 153 was to take back the four tags. Well, our recommendation was to take it back down to two. We know that people aren't hunting in that 153 unit now because it's all their views are over the 145, so they're all on the one hill, all the ramps. So we'd like to take that one, that 045, hold some more of those sheep in there, maybe if we hold enough that it would push some more back into the 153 to bring that unit back into huntable range so all the rams aren't in the one, the 05, 045, sorry. That was the reasoning for it. Thank you. Any other public comment? And then I'm going to bring it back to the commission for a moment. Commissioner Rawls. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I move to approve the uh, Nelson Bighorn Sheep Mini Ram Mini Legal Weapon Hunt 3151 as presented by the department with the exception of 045153. Uh, I'm going to split the difference between the department and the commission on that and propose uh, three. Uh, 134, uh, split the difference on that one as well, and <coughs> 6 on that. And then uh, on the non resident Nelson Bighorn sheep, any, any ram, any legal weapon, uh, 251, <coughs> as presented by the department. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Yes, sir. And the only reason I close that is uh, Moving on. Uh, California Bear Machine. Probably one of the biggest increases we've seen for quite some time. Pretty small now. Uh, high 40s, low 50 tags, we're losing a lot. Uh, we're probably seeing a seven tag increase of about 14%. Uh, we've just had some tremendous months last few years. Uh, average age is uh, still doing uh, really well. Seven years of age, so uh, and we really feel in there, so uh, I think it increases the game. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll take it out of the cap. Seeing none, we'll bring it back for a moment. Yeah, just a question. You said the tremendous hunts, and yet, and, and so that's why the 012 and the hunts are fairly significant, they're up about 25%. And that's, say, so just do what? Surveys or hunter success? Why are we giving the increase? Just trying to see why the reason is for giving them up. Yeah, I, I previously talked about um, our survey on modeling. Criteria that we have for safe quotas, all those, all those uh, bits of information support that thing. And the hunter su success in those areas looks like it's been fairly steady. Is that uh, your summation the deal as well? Uh, reasonable that we drop out? Are we going to run the risk of dropping off hunter success in the quality and the grams that we're not seeing? I haven't seen any comments from anybody about that. I'm just wondering if you guys can make an answer. Well, one thing that I know is there are a lot of passionate Greenland hunters, and if they have a problem, they normally uh, are not too far from my ear. No, no. Uh, success, 
was 90% uh, last year, slightly down from the year before. Uh, the average uh, score went down, but we really think that was uh, Warren Grove and really, really dry in Humboldt and Washington County. The average age is still at seven. So it's, it's been pretty good. Commissioner Drew. I'd make a motion to approve resident California bighorn sheep any ram any legal weapon hunt 8151 and non-resident California bighorn sheep any ram any legal weapon hunt 8251 as presented by the department. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passed and answered. two-page explanation page associated with quotas and just kind of uh, highlight what we did wrote in there. So it's pretty common practice for us when there's a disease event uh, that we, we err on the side of caution immediately after that. So in, in 2010 and 11 and 12, we estimated the worst in terms of the impacts, the secondary impacts on the mountain goat herds that were uh, St. Patrick with the uh, uh, major die-off that the big ones had in both East Homeless and Lewis. And so each year we've been conducting our aerial surveys and we uh, have been uh, pleasantly surprised to see more and adults uh, and having more confidence with those observations that we probably were overestimating the mortality uh, that occurred both immediately during the, the 
disease event and then and the post event. So uh, we classified 256 mountain goats total this last January. So uh, we really feel that the adults, uh, there's a lot more adults than we had estimated initially the last few years. Fortunately, and uh, so that the Heritage Committee members heard, uh, we're, we are working on uh, trying to monitor 